Lord's house. I pray that you would be blessed as we bless him with our worship and praise. If you have your bulletins, just quickly go through the announcements. If you're visiting with us today. Uh, we are excited that you're here. If you do not have a church home, we'd like to invite you to come and make King for Christian your church home. Please sign and fill out one of the green visitor cards uh, before you leave and uh, leave that uh, uh, with the back there in the glass case put it in the offering plate. Uh, Sunday school, I just want to encourage all of us to Sunday school, 9.30 uh, each Lord's Day. And we do have classes for all evening worship service tonight at 6.30. I uh, encourage all of you to come and be a part of that. Also tonight, we will have youth meetings. Uh, they too will be at 6.30 in the fellowship also. All of the young people uh, come and be part of the uh, youth group. Bible study, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, uh, continuing our study of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Monday, January 28th, uh, mission committee meeting uh, at 7 o'clock. So uh, any who like to be involved in the missions uh, committee, uh, please come and be a part of that, that meeting in the fellowship hall as well. Uh, same day, uh, Kingsburg Christian Church Revival, March 3rd through the 6th. Uh, please put that into your plans now. Uh, Les Bolt and uh, his son Lance Bolt uh, will be preaching. Nathan has moved into uh, Texas. He will not be a part of that this year, but his brother Lance is taking his place. Helping his hands ministry here at the church. There are forms back there available if anyone uh, would like to have some kind of a mission project done for their home or a community of some sort. Uh, please fill out one of those and uh, put that uh, in the hands of a mission committee member, which would be Mark Wright, Carolyn, um, Ron one and others right at the moment, but uh, uh, get that or give it to me and we'll uh, make sure that this is the right people. Uh, persons who are interested in that ministry, joining the Helping His Hands, there is a list back there in the last case uh, to be a part of that in order to be called one. Sunday school teachers are needed. Please see Robert Murray uh, if you would be interested in teaching. Uh, uh, one of our Sunday school classes, Secret Sisters, if you've completed a form, and are participating, it says here, in 2019, draw a name today, and then pray for your uh, Secret Sister all through the year. Uh, need to have uh, ladies to host the Women's Fellowship. Uh, there is a sheet back there to sign up for that, and uh, it's not really complicated or anything, and it's a good ministry to, for the ladies in the church. Uh, 2019 Vacation Bible School will be here before you know it. That's the first uh, week in June. Uh, so keep that, put that in your schedules as well. And uh, the theme for that is Roar, God is Good, Life is Wild. So be praying for BBS this year. A lot of kids are coming. And uh, learn about Jesus. Pray about what you're going to do to help teach, to uh, be a part of that and help kids to learn about the Lord. Uh, safety team, if you're interested in this, uh, there's a couple of sign up sheets back there. Uh, Tony has uh, some things he'd like to say about that. Uh, can I get through the rest of the announcement? Let me, let me finish these up real quick. Um, the new board officers, uh, Mark Wright's the chairman, board vice treasurer, Robert Murray is the secretary. I'll be praying for them as well as for all the board members to the new years of God gives them great godly wisdom. Um, the video services, Matt's uh, videotaping. Uh, you can go to uh, Kingsburg Christian Church and uh, you can watch those different things are going on. And also during the revival, Matt's not going to be here Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. He needs somebody to run the camera. Uh, so if you'd be willing to uh, do that ministry, talk to him. He will uh, get you uh, lined up for that. Um, just a reminder that the, the texting, we still have it. Uh, there was a, a danger there for a while of Verizon canceling that. They decided not to do that. Uh, so we will continue to have the texting. And if you're not in that, please get signed up for that. The, in, the uh, instructions for that are back there on the wooden table. Uh, you know, like we canceled services last week. Some of you aren't signed up for that. And you're not on the one call either, so it's kind of iffy as to whether or not everybody would get the word. So please sign up for the texting. It's unlimited a number of people you can have on that. Um, got some some notes and things to read real quick, and then uh, I haven't forgot about Tony. He'll be up here in just a moment. Here's a thank you note to uh, thanking each one of you. Uh, it says, knowing people as nice as you gives uh, life a brighter touch, and so to touch uh, students and all of you, thanks very, very much. Uh, thank you doesn't begin to express my gratitude for the work the mission team did on my garage. Yeah, I'm so blessed to have a KCC family member, uh, to be a KCC family member, uh, and in Christ. This is from Molly, and she had some wonderful pictures there. I gave Mark, I'd like to see the pictures of uh, what happened that day. Also, a note, uh, thank you card from Vicki. Uh, says, I'm so blessed to have such a loving family church family. Thanks for your prayers, calls, visits, cards, and food during my sober surgery. God bless you all. Uh, from Vicki Hawking, these notes will be put on the bulletin board in the hallway uh, between the buildings. Also from Kevin Young, 
Uh, just saying thank you doesn't seem enough. Hope you know how much your thoughtfulness is appreciated, uh, caring, and the love you offer the family of Karen Young. It says God bless, and this is from the Young family. Also, he has a little note in here. Uh, it says the family of Karen Young would like to thank the Kingsburg Christian Church for their caring and thoughtfulness during this difficult time of passing my mother. Uh, thank you to Pastor Alan Wright for the beautiful and heartfelt eulogy. Also, uh, for the beautiful flower arrangement and delicious meal that was enjoyed by all from the great cooks. Uh, your thoughtfulness and love is greatly appreciated, and God bless you all. And that too will be on the bulletin board. I have one more thing, Tony, and I'll step out of your way. Um, there is a uh, men's day. Uh, the theme of it is How Men Are Wired. This is at St. Louis Christian College, which is, of course, just over in St. Louis. Uh, this is for Saturday, March 2nd, uh, so there's plenty of time to clear your schedule and you can sign up for uh, Bob Russell is going to be the main speaker there. Bob Russell was the senior uh, pastor at Southeast Christian Church in Louisville, which runs, you know, almost 30,000 people. Uh, he, he's going to be the main speaker there. It's from 9.30 in the morning with coffee and donuts until um, when it ends, I guess, because there's no ending in time on this. Um, so... Great opportunity, and uh, this will be on the bulletin board as well. Okay. Uh, we would like to update our list. Uh, we had several sign up to help uh, with uh, safety issues around the church. We'd just like to update that list. There's a sign up sheet back here. And also, uh, we would like to uh, have some type of a program, and this would be on a Sunday night, probably after the revival. Uh, and this would be on uh, the dangers of scams. I had a member last week tell me that, that they were tried, uh, someone called them, and, and some of these scams are easy to fall for. It's not only directed at older people, but even, even younger people can be deceived by what's going on now. So this is just one of the safety issues, and if there's enough, Signed up, we'll go ahead and plan this, have a speaker in, and we'll do it on a Sunday night after revival. All right, any other announcements? Okay, uh, then moving to the prayer list. Uh, in the men's class, we added, uh, no, not in the men's class, this is from Molly, uh, Kathy Armstrong. <coughs> She's in the hospital, just keep Kathy Armstrong in prayer. A friend of Molly's, or neighbor of Molly's, if you would, for any prayer. Um, a lot of things that went on in, in people's lives and things, a lot of good things, bad things. Steve and Chris McCorkle, uh, be in prayer for them. Steve McIntyre, uh, be praying for him. Uh, Eddie Calson, which is uh, uh, Lori's brother, she's got some uh, serious issues. And you said it's going to go home today, maybe? Okay, so be praying for him. He's got a lot of health issues. Uh, Danny Bosek has started the radiation treatments this week uh, for the cancer he has. And uh, John Blythe is now out of the hospital and back home, but uh, certainly has a lot of issues going on. Connie Hawking is going to have some kind of procedure this uh, Thursday. Uh, she just, you know, vaguely shared that with the uh, Wednesday night Bible study group. I don't know what she's having done, and she didn't, you know, she didn't tell, so uh, we'll just respect that. So be praying for her. Anybody else uh, to add? Are these to be added? This, okay. Crystal Griffin, uh, thyroid sur surgery, uh, Mike Crumley with leukemia, Steve Shiley with leukemia, Lydia Hawking uh, with RSV, this is Justin's uh, little girl, and then uh, our uh, daughter-in-law, Emily, um, <coughs> is several weeks pregnant, but uh, she's certainly not ready for the baby to come. She had some contractions five minutes apart this week. And uh, she went to the hospital and they were able to stop those. She needs to go at least five more weeks. So be praying for Emily and the baby. Anyone else to add? Yeah. Sarah Byrne. Okay, that's got it. it. Yeah. You talked about her. Yeah. The guy that I work with, his, his wife actually fell this week. Uh, Tuesday night he had to drive home after work. So uh, she, they found out she had kidney stones. So don't know what all else. She damaged something in her back. She is on the prayer list. She's on the third row in the right left. Okay. She keeps there in your prayers. Anyone else? Okay. On to the birthday list then. Uh, we want to wish happy uh, birthday to Janice Victor. So her second. Happy belated birthday because we didn't meet last week. To Paxton Watson, uh, January 20th. 
Zach Murray, January 21st. Sue Hartbrake, January 23rd. Any birthdays we in the bulletin? Okay, then happy anniversary also to Jim and Jan Murphy on February 1st. Any anniversaries? Thank you.
are going to do specials all together. Let's praise our Lord this morning as we stand together and sing Everlasting God. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. 
Yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are all healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Come around your table, the name of your Son, who died on the cross for us. Lord, we pray that we'll never be forget the great sacrifice you made for us. And we pray, Lord, that we live the kind of life <coughs> We especially pray and thank you for the many blessings of life that you've given each and every one of us. And we pray that we will be used in the of your kingdom and this community and throughout the world. We also pray that you'll be with those in the prayer list. We pray that you especially press those that are out of treatments for cancer. We just pray that you will kind of help them that the doctors to take care of everything that needs to be done. We also pray for those that have lost loved ones this past week. We just pray that you will guide them and help them to, to remember the great things that their loved ones have done. We pray also for those that have those unspoken needs, Lord, for we know that there's many, and we just pray that you be with them. Also pray that you be with the military men and women. We pray that you keep them safe and bring them safely home. We pray now, Lord, just bless this love to remember this body that's broken upon the cross. We say in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, as we continue around this table this morning, Father, we're most thankful for this day. Bless each one who has come out to worship you and hear your word. Heavenly Father, a special blessing upon Sabrina this morning as she presented your word in song that we come and we gather around this table and we accept these emblems. Foremost, that we recognize the coming of your son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, also, uh, we ask a blessing upon the three young ladies this morning who, who uh, sang for us that, Father, the world will tear at these girls in, in life. We, we pray that you would give them strength to endure. Heavenly Father, we ask you also uh, bless those on our prayer list, the unspoken needs. Each one here has a special need. It might not be on the prayer list, but we ask that you meet our needs. We're most thankful, most of all, for your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name I pray.
at Sabrina and Robert for their special and the three girls for their special. I love the music. Uh, I don't get to hear much preaching, but I do love the music. Uh, if you turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 2, uh, we're going to continue with our study of Christian community within the church. A couple of weeks ago, I started this series, and I reminded you of my childhood growing up and going to civics class and studying... <coughs> Boy, I got loud. Thank you. Studying community, uh, not Christian community, but the community of the world, the secular world around us and our involvement in it. But we really want to foster and to grow, especially in this new year, the sense of Christian community within the church here at Keysburg and certainly worldwide uh, within the body of Christ. In Acts chapter 1 verse 15, I remind you of a passage of scripture I used a couple of weeks ago that spoke of the number of believers prior to the creation of the church. It says in, in those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. And so the first Christian community included only 120 people, including the apostles, of course, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, verse 41, after Peter preaches the sermon on Pentecost and, and the church's birth that day, it says those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. And I wish I could emphasize on the screen what I've got emphasized in my notes here, that the number 3,000 should be in bold print and the phrase added to their number as well. So the number of believers jumped quickly from 120 in that small Christian community to 3,120. And so instantly they have become a large church, what would be called a mega church today, but it also carries with it, in doing so, all the accompanying issues. There are issues. In any church, the larger it grows. I want you to take note, Acts chapter 4, verse 4. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men, not even including all the women and the children, the number of men grew to about 5,000. So if you do a little math, the total number of believers by Acts chapter 4, verse 4, 5,000 men plus possibly an equal number of women, or maybe more, 5,000 women plus maybe half that many children, 2,500. We now have a church of 12,520. Literally a mega church. The first church. The first mega church. The first Christian community. But 12,520 people carry with it a lot of issues, a great number of problem issues, not the least of which is listen, 12,520 people, how do you keep them all active? How do you keep them all involved? How do you keep them all connected to the larger group? How do you incorporate them and involve them in the ministry of the church, the Christian community, to keep them spiritually strong and faithful so they don't fall away? That was a big issue for them. A monumental key to solving those issues is to develop ways within a church family and build strong relationships between all the believers so that everyone stays connected to the larger community, the church. Let me read Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. It's where I want to preach this morning and look at the building of Christian community, what the early believers did, that, that numbering of 3,120. What did they do to keep everybody involved and connected? Verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the fellowship. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. And they devoted themselves... To prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All of the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day, please note that. Not every week, every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. 
And the result? And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Building Christian community within the church. There are four quick points here. I'm not going to drag any one of them out overly long. But I want you to note that in the beginning, with the first Christian community, 3,120 people, the believers, first of all, foremost, stayed together. They were devoted to that. They were committed to being together with one another. There are three together phrases in this passage. Look at verse 44. There's the first of them. It says in verse 44, chapter 2, verse 44, all the believers were together. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, verse 46, here's the second one. Every day they continued to meet together. The third of those phrases is in uh, verse 46 also. They broke bread in their homes and ate together. And so, I don't want to drag this out, but it's the, it's the forefront of everything. This is one of the keys to keeping everybody connected to building Christian community where everyone belongs is first and foremost to be together. Over the years, many people have come and gone through this church. I, I've really been thinking about this a lot, of, you know, preparing these messages and so forth. All the people that I can remember who came and were involved in the church for a while, some had longer stays than others, some had real short, some got saved here, got baptized, and, and, and then they're gone. They're not connected. They're not still here. They're not together with me and with all of us that are here at KCC. But ongoing, what can we do as a church family, as a church community, to keep that from happening? Can we involve and include other people in the years to come and involve them in such a way that they don't leave, that they stay together? I think there are ways we can do that. I was talking to Mark earlier this morning. One of the things that's really been on my heart and mind for the last year is the idea of small groups. There's a lot of problems with small groups. But I think we need to start some small groups. We've got about 100 and some people here. And small groups don't need to be more than six or eight people. So we can break up into several small groups and pe people can then be connected to each other. Build relationships within the small groups and stay connected with the other believers as a larger community. So they stayed together. And notice what they stayed together for. First of all, they stayed, here's my second point, 3,120 3, believers stayed together and they shared everything. I'm not making that up. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 44 and 45. Verse 44, all the believers were together and had everything in common. Verse 45, selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. And so... The Christian community, the very first Christian community, which is our model, our example, what we should be modeling ourselves after, were a group of 3,120 people who were always together, completely developing uh, relationships. And one of the primary ways that they did that was by mutually sharing their lives and even their possessions with each other and connecting to one another. Chapter 4, verse 32, says all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. Chapter 4, verses 34 and 35, goes on to say, there were no needy persons among them. Now that's a marvelous thing. Think about that. 3,120 people. And by the fourth chapter of Acts, there's actually almost... 13,000 of them, and for some reason, somehow, they were able to make the connection amongst the community to where nobody in the church was needing. It goes on to say in 34 and 35, for where from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, they being the leaders of the, of the community, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. The example of Joseph called Barnabas, Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37, it says this, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus. Cyprus is a little island out in the Mediterranean Sea. He is not from Israel. 
He's not from Jerusalem where the, the first Christian community is. He's from another country, but he has joined the fellowship, he has joined the community, and he says he, he had some a field, verse 37, that he owned, that, that, and he brought the money and put it in the apostles' feet. There is such a connection going on amongst those early believers that this man from another country stayed, sold his possessions, and gave to the others of the community who were in need. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, they devoted themselves to four things, one of which was fellowship. Actually, it says the fellowship. The word fellowship simply means the sharing of lives. Relationships. Being connected to one another. The whole purpose of dinners in church is not to have dinner at church. Sorry, ladies. The purpose of dinners is not to save you from having to cook. In fact, some of the ladies here have to cook, and some of the men join in. Not everybody gets out of cooking when we have dinners. That's not the point of it anyway. The point of church dinners is for fellowship. Families typically get together around the dinner table, do they not? And they share what happened, went on through the day. They share their lives. We are a church community, a church family, and so we have dinners to sit around the table and eat and share what's going on in our lives. It doesn't always have to be meals. That's certainly not a prerequisite for fellowship. Fe fellowship, the sharing of our lives, the building of relationships can take place anytime members, believers get together and stay together. Let me read Philippians chapter 1, or chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, which speak of the Christian community, the sharing of lives in the church at Philippi, which is some years after Acts. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy by, complete by being like-minded. He's talking to the whole church, be like-minded. Having the same love meaning for each other and for the Lord, being one in spirit and in purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. In other words, don't do anything in earthly life or spiritual life at the church. Don't do anything just for yourself. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. When you look around in this this fellowship in this sanctuary or out there in the world, when you look at any other person, any and every other person, you ought to see somebody that you consider to be more important than you. Everybody. Everybody is of more value than you. Not that you aren't valuable, but our mindset is like that of God, and we put others first, because he goes on in verse 4. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, your family, your bills, your health, and so on and so forth. But it also says, but also to the interests of others. You ever been with somebody, met somebody for the first time and tried to build a relationship with them, and they never, ever ask you anything about you? The whole conversation that you're involved in is you asking them. Well, do you have any kids? Well, yeah, I got three. Well, how old are they? Well, you know. And they never once ask you about you. We are to look to other people and involve ourselves in their lives and be in fellowship and, and join together in relationship. One Christian writer speaking about Christian community says that our relationships with everybody else in the world fall into one of four types of categories. Number one is public. That is, connections through public forums, such as work, school, or other organizations. Second is social. Those are relationships based on surface-level interactions, such as sports or something like that. But these people are not necessarily even our friends. The third are personal relationships, where we have closer connections that we forge through shared experiences and feelings. The most ultimate, of course, is that of intimate relationships. That's where there's real connection between people. And these relationships happen through our most closely shared experiences and feelings, like when we are in worship, going through troubles, or even experiencing joys. 
fellowship. So Christian fellowship <coughs> is one of the most important ways to develop relationships and build the community and keep people connected. People want people to care about their lives. People want to know that they matter to somebody, to somebody's. Third point, 3,120 believers worship every day at the temple. I don't, I don't know what to say about this passage because we only meet once. We only typically meet once a, you know, a week. We're here on Sunday morning. You know, if you come to Sunday school, you're here for two hours. And if you come to Sunday night, you're here for three hours. Listen to this scripture text. Understand what's happening in the early Christian community. Verse 46, Acts 2, 46. Every day, they continue to meet together in the temple courts. Now, am I missing something here? <clears throat> it's not, it doesn't say once a week, does it? It literally does not say once a week. It says every day, they, the believers, 3,120 of them, continue to meet together in the temple courts. The temple, of course, is the one place on earth at that time where God ordained to worship of himself. There are no churches that have buildings and so forth that have established. And so the church, the early Christian community, they don't know what to do except go to the temple. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they devoted themselves. There are four Christian acts of Christian worship in the community. First of all, they devoted themselves in worship to the apostles' teaching. That is, of course, all of their focus, all of their teaching, all of their gatherings were focused on the teachings of Christ and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead because it hasn't been that many days yet since that is happened. Second of all, they devoted themselves to the fellowship. We've talked about that. To one another and sharing life. Third, to the breaking of bread. That is a reference to the Lord's table. They met in the temple courts every single day. And everybody was taking communion all the time. And finally, into prayer. 3,120 people gathering together on a regular basis. And they were always praying. We had studied prayer the other night, and the involvement of the Holy Spirit in prayer. One of the scriptures we looked at says in 1 Thessalonians, pray continually. Really? Yeah. Now, if your idea of prayer is to fold your hands and bow your head and close your eyes, if that's what you think of when you think of, of proper Christian prayer, then no, you can't do that all the time. You don't have to. There's not a verse, you know, there's not a verse of scripture that says you have to fold your hands when you pray. If you find it, let me know about it, because I don't think it's there. There's nothing in the Bible that says when you pray, you have to bow your head. There's nothing in Scripture that says you have to close your eyes. Tony's all about that. No, I'm serious. It's not in here. We do that out of tradition. We do that to keep distractions. I get that, but you don't have to do it. And so they were devoted to prayer, and I can't imagine them walking around with their hands folded, their heads down, their eyes closed, everywhere they went. Acts 2.47, what were they doing? With all of these, every single day God was being praised. Verse 47, praising God. More and more people were being converted and saved through their public gatherings together by people observing the worship of this early Christian community. People were like, oh, wow, look what they're doing. This is so different than what we experience as Jewish people. Acts 2.47, and the Lord added to the number daily, those who are being saved daily. People were getting saved in this early Christian community, in this early church, every single day. And it was growing and growing and growing. And all of these people, they had to keep them connected so they didn't fall away. Involving them in ministries, involving them in relationships, involving them in worship so that they stay connected, stay strong spiritually, and focused on Jesus. So the goal of developing Christian community, that is developing relationships among all the believers here at Kingsburg Christian Church, is to keep everyone connected within the church. It's not a social goal, although... In doing so, you might socialize by eating meals and so forth, but it's primarily a spiritual relationship based on worship rather than social. 
You see, any group of people can get together and socialize, can't they? I, I mean, seriously, you don't have to be a Christian to get together and have a party or something. That's not what it's about. It's about building relationships, about building each other up in the faith and keeping each one connected to the church and to the Lord. Final point, let me finish this up. 3,120 believers shared meals together every day in their homes as well. Not only did they worship together, but they were sharing meals together. 246 every day. They continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread. Now, that's not communion like before. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. We're talking about hospitality. Hospitality is where you open your home and your life and you often share a meal. You invite people to come over. It's commanded of all of us in Scripture anyway. 1 Peter chapter one verses, uh, chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 say this. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. And so we are to open our homes, we are to open our lives and invite others to come in and build relationships together by sharing our lives and sometimes eating meals together. You can go out to, if you don't want, you know, really have somebody in your house, you have a clean right Go out to a restaurant or something. To invite people here, tell me, I don't know so-and-so, I'll refer to some, you know, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen them in church. We don't all know each other here at Kingsburg. We need to build relationships. We need to step out of our comfort zone. We need to open our homes, our lives to one another. If there's somebody here at Kingsburg you don't know, reach out to them. Invite them to your house to have dinner. Or take them to a restaurant. Go have coffee together. Coffee's always good. <laughs> Do something together. Get to know each other. Share your lives together. The only danger of this is that the same people always stay together. That's the only danger. And that works completely opposite of what the goal is. The goal is to get everybody in a relationship to one another and keep each other connected. And so if you just stick with the same bunch, you know, people maybe in your own little group or whatever, then you don't reach out to other people. You don't get to know other people, and they don't get to know you. And it just kind of basically divides the church then into little small groups. So that's one of the problems, is to reach out to everybody, not just to the same people all the time. So when you go to a fellowship dinner, don't sit with the same people. Don't just sit with your own family or your own friend. Sit with somebody different. Sit with somebody you don't know. Ask them some questions. And hopefully they'll ask you questions and want to get to know you. The result of all this, if we can build this, if we can, if we can develop this, where everybody's connected, everybody loves and knows each other, and everybody's involved in worship and ministry, and we don't lose people, and people stay or are involved, the result of this is that people out there in the community are going to notice that. They're going to be want to be a part of that. Acts 247, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the number of daily those who are being saved. We can reach more people in Kingsburg, Mount Carmel, Grayville, Belmont, all of the places in between. Who knows how far this thing could reach? And touch a lot of lives for Jesus and bring them the goal. Not just to bring them to church, but to bring them to Jesus. Connect them to the the larger community of Christ here at Keatsburg Christian. Reach out. Look around the room. There are people you don't know. You don't even know their names. Go talk to them. I know it'll be awkward. When you meet somebody new for the first time, it's always awkward. But you know it doesn't last long. Reach out. Invite them to dinner. Invite them to a restaurant. Invite them to have coffee. I, I think that most. <laughs> Great opportunities to build a Christian community and keep everyone connected. The whole point of this is for Jesus. The one who loved us so much. He came, died, was raised again, and is coming soon. 
We want to be ready when it comes. We want to be connected to Him and to the church, the fellowship of believers, when He comes. You're here today and you're not a Christian, never accepted Christ, never been immersed into Jesus Christ. Today could be that day, could be that time, that moment, but that could happen. Would you come stand before the congregation and confess your faith in Jesus Christ? I'll lead you through the confession. Accept Him as Lord and Savior, be immersed into Jesus Christ. We'll get towels, we'll get clothes, we'll get whatever we need and make it happen today. Let's stand.